This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be resolving one last kind of bug in our audio system, which is that right now we kind of have to choose between either exposing the parameters of our background music and sound effects settings so that our user can control them, or being able to actually control them through snapshots so that we can change the levels of our sounds while we're playing our game. And we don't really want this to be an either-or decision. We want to be able to do both. And fortunately, Unity actually makes this happen through the mixer itself by this idea that there is this sort of parent-child hierarchy of our uh, mixer groups. What we haven't really talked about is this master group, which basically every other group must feed into on a mixer. There always has to be one, parent, one single parent root um, group unless you have multiple mixers. And what this means is that no matter what we have these volume settings to here, they're kind of beholden to this one, and if this gets lower, then these are going to, by, by their nature, get lower as well. And we can actually use this to be able to kind of split our audio control between both the user and the settings menu and our snapshots when certain events happen. And so what we're going to do now to make this uh, kind of get implemented is we're going to first change the names of these, because these two right here are our groups that we are exposing um, to our settings menu adjustments so that we can, uh, the user can make those changes. So I want to rename these to be explicitly that they're going to be controlled by the user. So I'm going to right click, rename, we're going to change this to bgm underscore user, and the same goes for the sound effects. But in addition to this, what I want is to have a child group under each of these, which is controlled by our snapshots. And so what I'll do is I'll click on BGM user, I will add a group, and when you have whatever group you have selected, that's what uh, the child appears under. So if I press this now, you see it's a child under BGM user. I'm going to rename this, and I'm going to call this one BGM snapshots, so that we know that that's what's controlling this one. And the same will go for the sound effects user. Oops, not rename, I want to add a new group, and then rename that to SFX snapshots. So now we have this uh, kind of grandparent, then these two here, the users are parents, and then the snapshots are children. You could actually have these um, switched either way. You could have the users be children of the snapshots. It wouldn't actually affect your audio right now. However, in most cases, you may have like multiple, in particular with sound effects, you may have sound effects for your world, for your player, for enemies, for the UI, and those, you don't wanna have to feed user controls into all of those, so it's easiest to have multiple um, of your snapshot controls and then have them all feed into the user which they control through that one bar. So with that now what we can do is we can actually we do want to make sure that our snapshots are correct because right now remember if I go to my mute VGM I was muting the user group it wasn't the user group at the time but now it is so I do want to make sure that I'm changing that I'm going to bring this back up to zero and then I want to change actually adjust that in the inspector here so it's exactly zero and then I want to change the snapshot one down to negative 80. So when our snapshot goes to mute, we're muting that snapshot control. I do need to also double check that my uh, background music player, and I can either do this in right in our scene here, or I can go to our project and into our audio folder where I have the background music player free prefab. Um, I can change this in either case, but I just want to make sure that this is also now feeding not to the user here, which would bypass the snapshots, but make sure it feeds to the snapshots so that it does get affected by those changes. I just need to make sure because I changed this on the instance here and not on the prefab, I need to make sure I apply it. And then finally, all I need to do, uh, re you'll recall that when we were changing the uh, audio through snapshots before, I needed to kind of reclaim control of those groups because they had been exposed at the beginning of the scene um, to take on any previously saved user controls. Uh, we lost control though, so I needed to kind of take that back from the user control so I could change it with snapshots. We no longer need to do that. We want to make sure that the user always has control of those um, user groups and that because we're only ever changing the snapshot groups with our snapshots. So what we can do is go into our persistent audio player script here. And all I need to do is go down to where I was running the change music. These clear float methods were what were kind of releasing those exposed parameters. I can delete both of these lines. I no longer need to release those parameters. They can always stay exposed, so the user always has control over them. So I'll delete both of those. And that's really all there is to it. There is one more thing I wanted to do, 
which is in our audio mixer now. When I start actually setting these uh, snapshots, I no longer need to worry about either of these two um, user groups. I'm never going to be adjusting those because those are controlled by the settings menu. So what I can do is I can add a new view down here. And what this will do for me is I'm going to call this one hide user groups. And I'm simply going to hide both the SFX user group and the BGM user group. The children still stay visible. It doesn't do kind of a cascading effect. But what this means now is that whenever I'm in this particular view, I don't have to worry about changing things that aren't actually going to affect uh, the volume. Uh, I can make sure that what, I'm, what I am changing here is actually going to take effect when we call these snapshots. So now what we'll see is if I hit play, our music is playing, and these two here have not changed because these are just kind of defaulted until an event happens. If I go back to the default view, we can see that my sound effects has taken on. I had a little bit of a quieter there. My user um, setting for background music is still uh, kind of at its default. If I go into settings and I start adjusting these, I can bring, say, the sound effects down a bit more and the music down a bit, and then I save it. Those changes occur in the background uh, and the user groups rather, but then if I start the game, you'll see that the snapshot of the background music was what will dip. So if I go like this, that drops down and comes back up for the smooth change from one track to another. But we never, these user groups now never change. So we're able to have both user control and snapshot control in the same scene, in the same project, and they both work together perfectly. So this is going to be the last thing we're going to do with our audio mixer and audio settings right now. We're going to jump into some new topics in the next video and series of videos. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.